I wonder, do any of you guys think about or have you ever thought about what the world would be like if you could replace human limbs with robotic limbs? Or if you could put on some kind of exoskeleton, a robotic exoskeleton to augment or recreate your function? How incredible that would be. I've thought about that for a very long time. And in fact, I think about it all day, every day and have dedicated my life to trying to make that a reality. You see, I grew up probably similar to some people in this room watching movies like these and being inspired by the seamless merging of humans and machines in order to recreate some lost function, think like Luke Skywalker and the Luke arm that he has after he becomes an amputee, uh, or augment some function beyond whatever's humanly possible, such as Tony Stark and Iron Man. And I would think, how incredible would it be if this actually could be a reality for humans? But it wasn't until my medical training that I saw just how critical it is that this actually does become a reality. There are millions and millions and millions of people all across the globe that have different types of musculoskeletal disorders or disabilities that limit their ability to function who have a 0% chance of being able to regain their function to a pre-injury level. Think about amputees, people with diabetic limb disease, people that have rheumatoid arthritis who can't move their hands, elderly people who lose their ability to walk progressively over time. They all have 0% chance today, as it stands today, of regaining that function. That's why I decided to dedicate my life to this. Now, I didn't expect the way that I would be working on this, but I knew that I wanted to try to make some dent in this problem. And so I went on and I did a research fellowship in plastic and reconstructive surgery focused on reconstructive surgery for the limbs, neuromuscular reconstructive surgery. And I did a whole bunch of animal studies and all these incredible things in the field. But then I took a step back during this research and realized that we actually exist in this time of great paradox. We have unbelievable robots. I have brought one here today, a robotic hand. Unbelievable robots that have been around for literally decades. We have humanoid robots today, yet your average patient that has some kind of disability doesn't even have robotics as an option for them. An amputee is much more likely not to use any prosthetic at all than they are to use some kind of a robotic appendage. An elderly person, there's probably not a single elderly person in the world that's actually using an exoskeleton despite technology like that being around for such a long time. So I thought, what is the reason for this? Why is, this, why is there this massive divide between what's happening in the robotics field, we have incredible medicine, but why aren't patients using these technologies to better their lives? It wasn't the price of these robots, they're undeniably expensive, but insurance is used to paying much more for much more expensive therapies, think like orf dr drugs for orphan diseases, right? Much more expensive than a robotic appendage. So it's not the price, it's not the technology, we have the robots, they're incredible, they've been proven in a laboratory environment, it must be something else. And what it ultimately comes down to is the human machine interface. How you can extract human intention and use that to drive robotic action in a real world setting. So it's all well and good to do it in an academic environment, you know, where you have all the infrastructure that you could possibly need to make it perfect. But how do you translate that to somebody's home for your average person living their life to the net benefit of them? And that's what's lacking. Now, if you're familiar at all with this field of human machine interfacing, you've probably heard of Elon Musk's brain implant company, Neuralink. And you might be under the impression that the only technology anybody's working on to try to merge humans and machines are brain implants. And that one day, whether we like it or not, if we have some injury, we're gonna have to just you know, bite the bullet, go under the knife and get a brain implant in order to utilize robotics or computers and all that. And I'm here today to talk about how that's not actually the truth. How there's actually technology that's much more exciting than this, much safer and much closer to being a reality for countless patients than brain computer interface. What we're gonna talk about today is muscle machine interface. See, it turns out that muscles generate electrical activity just like the brain. And in fact, muscle electrical activity is close to a thousand times larger than brain activity, which means it's easier to detect, easier to decode, easier to use. And all of those things are critical for an at-home system that you expect to work for your average person. The way that it works is that you control machines identically to how you control intact limbs. You have some thought of an action, kind of a thought. It's hard to describe how we, how we move our limbs, but it starts in the brain as this really complicated neural activity and then becomes kind of purified, if you will, as it makes its way down your muscles. And ultimately, your muscles contract, and when they contract, they generate electrical activity. And it's that electrical activity that we can detect and decode and use to drive robotic action. And what's even more amazing is that people that have different types of disabilities, let's take an amputee, the most extreme example of this, that they still have all of those neural pathways intact. And so an amputee who's lost their limb can still try to do all the different actions within the limb that's no longer there, called their phantom appendage, 
and they can actually flex their muscles and attempt to do those actions. And that's the electrical activity that you can detect and decode and use to drive the robotic action. And so companies like mine, Phantom Neuro, are working on commercializing technology like this. So at Phantom Neuro, we're creating a minimally invasive muscle machine interface that goes under the skin and kind of functions like an implantable armband. And it passively sits on top of the muscle and records the electrical activity and wirelessly sends that out of the body in order to control a prosthetic or exoskeleton or whatever it might be. It just depends on what you sync up to. And there's other people working on different techniques in order to harness this muscle machine interface. But the main point is that you can actually today do a lot of the things that people talk about, the promises of BCI being able to do tomorrow, one day in the distant future. And you can see here that this person, using nothing but sensors on his arm and harnessing nothing but the electrical activity from the muscles in his arm, is able to control in real time this virtual reality robot arm. And so this is how you could use muscle machine interface to interact with uh, the metaverse, for example. Or how actually an upper limb exoskeleton would work where you literally are using the muscle signals within the limb and using that to drive robotic action in something that's attached to your arm, where the robot's almost floating around you but augmenting your function in some way. An amputee, using the exact same setup, is able to control this robotic arm as if it's his own natural limb. You can see, utilizing the sensors on the amputation stump and detecting, once again, nothing but the muscle signals, he's able to control each individual finger. That's something he hasn't been able to do since he was a child when he lost his limb. And if you implant a pig in its forelimb with sensors and then train the pig using marshmallows, that's me feeding it marshmallows, uh, it's the only way you could get it to do anything. Uh, if you have the pig with sensors in its arm and create a cyber pig of sorts, you can actually have this pig unknowingly control this virtual reality robot leg, where this robot leg is mimicking what its forelimb is doing in real time. And this is exactly what you would do for an elderly person, for example, who wants to use an exoskeleton in order to augment their walking function. You would have that robot mimic what they're attempting to do with their walking capability, but it would also, on top of that, stabilize you and augment that function for whatever purpose. And so to close this out, I want to share that I believe that we're on the cusp of radically changing what it means to live life with a disability. I believe that it's muscle machine interface, not brain computer interface, that's going to drastically change the landscape of movement disorders. I think that muscle machine interface is a safe and effective mechanism to do this today, whereas brain computer interface might one day work you know, way down the road. And so I believe that these things listed up here on the screen will be things of the past. I sure hope that they will be. And that diabetic individuals won't wait for their legs to slowly rot off of them until they get an amputation. That an elderly person won't be stuck in a wheelchair until, until they become bedridden. That a person with debilitating arthritis, this may sound radical, can one day actually elect to have an amputation so that they can use robotic hands to regain their function and actually continue to live their life rather than being maintained like this. And I believe that radical, crazy limb surgeries like this one here where you rotate your foot in order to turn it into a knee because there's no way to control a robotic knee within a prosthesis, that things like that will no longer have to exist. Thank you guys very much for your time.